Welcome to another episode of the One Year No Beer podcast. Today, we are diving deep into how we heal from trauma and very specifically using a tool that we use in our complete control program called somatic experiencing. Now, somatic experiencing is based on some phenomenal research and studies that show that there's this wonderful book, The Body Keeps the Score. And that is that the traumas and the past experiencing, these emotions are actually stuck inside our body. Bear with me on this one. Think of this yourself, right? All the way through your life, you were probably taught to pack those emotions down. We're taught to pack this down, there, there, ignore it, ignore it. And what that really does is it means that these past experiences are really rotting inside of us. Think of them like almost like becoming toxic. Because those emotions aren't felt, they're not dealt with properly, then they become toxic. And this is a part of our reason for drinking. This is our part of our reason for being able to deal with less stress, that needing to numb out at the end of the day it, because of a stressed out central nervous system. Now you might be listening to this and thinking, well, I don't have any trauma. I had a wonderful childhood and it was absolutely perfect and my parents were lovely. Well, I'm sorry to break the news to you, but childhood is traumatic. And even today, we with the best intentions, with the best information and the best neuroscience and the best ability to deal with our emotions still are giving our children trauma. I have traumatized my children. That's the truth. And so what we can do as human beings, what we can do for our children, for people around us, is go all in on trying to understand what is locked in the past and what do I need to move past. Now, there are many different modalities out there and I would encourage you to look at the science behind them. What is saying that really works? And this is why we use somatic experiencing because the science is absolutely there. Like today's science, right now science, is showing that it's significantly impactful when people are trying to deal with past experiences, trauma, and a stressed out central nervous system. Now, thankfully, all of this wonderful experience is not coming from me today, but one of our experts on the team from Complete Control, Candice. Candice is incredible, and we're so grateful to have Candice on our team. And today, you're gonna to experience what it is like to work with Candice, perhaps to shift some things for yourself, so if you normally listen to this podcast on the go, or if you're normally in the gym, gym working out or a busy place, then maybe for this one, just find somewhere quiet. Find somewhere where you can be on your own and go deep into this experience. Enjoy the experience and maybe something shifts for you. This is the work, the work that we talk about doing that shifts almost every area of your life. Yes, this work, this stuff in the past is a huge contributor to our relationship with alcohol. And so if you find yourself drinking, drinking regularly, drinking a bit too much, then this is the stuff to work on. All right, I hope you enjoy today's podcast as much as we did creating it. And now I'm gonna introduce you to Candice. Welcome everybody to this class on somatic experiencing, or at least an orienting practice. I think for some of you who work with me or coach with me, you would have heard me talking about some of this stuff. But for those of you who haven't or who don't, um, I'm going to go into a little bit of detail around somatic, what somatic experiencing is as a modality. And then I'm going to talk about the practice, which is an orienting practice. And then we're going to actually practice. We're going to kick off with somatic experiencing. Somatic experiencing which is the modality I'm trained in, is a body-orientated therapeutic approach to healing trauma and other stress-related disorders. So somatic means in the body. This is why we say it's body-orientated. It's um, a multidisciplinary intersection of physiology, psychology, ethology, biology, neuroscience, and um, indigenous healing practices, um, as well as medical biophysics. Uh, Peter Levine, who is the person who started uh, researching this, he's a medical biophysicist. And so this modality includes everything, puts it together, and, um, and allows us to practice with the body in this way. So it's been used um, clinically for over four decades. 
And, you know, if you hear somatic experiencing, you'll hear the names Peter Naveen, Basil van der Kolk, and even Stephen Porges. Stephen Porges is um, the person who brought us polyvalent theory. Um, and then other resources that are a little less academic for those who are interested. Um, Deb Dana, she wrote Ankit. Irene Lyon, she has a great approach using somatic experiencing as part of it. Gabor Mate, who's um, an addiction specialist. Diane Poole-Hiller, who specializes in attachment theory. And Maggie Klein and Kathy Kane, both of which are somatic experiencing practitioners. So if you are interested in learning a bit more, those are the resources I would recommend on this. So when it comes to orienting, which is one of the one of the things we use within somatic experiencing, it's one of the building blocks we use for healing unresolved trauma. So orienting is the mechanism we use to engage with the environment. There are two types of orienting. There's defensive orienting, which is when we orient either consciously or subconsciously to sounds, smells, feelings um, of potential threat in our environment. So our system, our senses are sending out all the time, scanning our environment, looking for things that could potentially mean danger. Defensive orienting is when we, we notice this and we actually orient towards it. You'll often see this in the animal kingdom. If you see antelope grazing, they'll be grazing, they'll be quite relaxed and then they'll hear something or they'll alert and they'll all look up in the same direction, ears, eyes, nose, body oriented in one direction. That's defensive orienting. We're, we're orienting towards potential threat or danger. Exploratory orienting is where we're taking our environment in, in a relaxed way. So when we go for a walk in nature and we hear the birds, for example, or we can smell the earth or the, or the bush flowering or something um, in our environment. This is exploratory orienting. It's much wider. It engages a lot of our senses and is very calming to the nervous system. So those are the two types of orienting. So when it's working as it should, orienting is effortless. We don't do it consciously. It happens naturally. And we should be able to move seamlessly between both. We should be able to experience our environment in a broad way. And we should be able to bring it in if there is suddenly something that seems out of the ordinary or, um, or a potential threat. So in a healthy system, as I was saying, we don't need to think about this. It just happens. A good example would be like when we, when we walk across the street, we just naturally look both ways. We orient to potential danger, right? Even if we're in the street, our senses are reaching out to hear for cars, to see where we're going. That's all online and working as it should. If we have unresolved trauma, so either long-term stress, shock trauma, developmental trauma, any of the big or little, like for example, if we live in an unsafe space, all bad things have happened to us, or we had an angry parent or chaotic childhood or very stressful. One of two things can happen. Option one, we believe that our environment is unsafe. And so we're constantly on the lookout. We're hyper vigilant. We're over defensively orientating. Like we're always on the lookout for trouble. You know, for those of us to have the idea that we can't really be happy in the moment because like troubles just around the corner, or bad stuff happens to us. Or, you know, we're just always like a bit tense because we're always scanning our environment. This would be option one. Option two is where we totally disconnect from our environment in order to cope. You know, it's so hectic, it's so chaotic. We actually just cut off from our bodies because our, it's, 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 our senses live in our body and we just live in the head because it feels easier, feels less chaotic. So just to recap, if we have unresolved trauma, we can either be living in a hypervigilant state where everything feels dangerous 
or we can be living in a state where we actually don't see danger coming because we're just living in our heads. Everything has to do with cognitively trying to understand stuff. And then we miss out some, on information our body may be bringing. So living in either of these states for a long period of time results in the need to soothe. So if alcohol is the soothing mechanism and we are exploring the environments which create the need to soothe, this can be a contributing factor. Also, unfortunately, these things don't heal with time. We have to work with them. With both hypervigilance and shutdown, we have to actively work with them um, because we need to disarm or reteach our orienting response to come back online. We need to reteach it. So we need to move from the overly defensive to exploratory over time which then helps the nervous system shift and brings a bit more calm to the system. That's if we're hypervigilant. If we are cut off, we also need to learn how to orient because it's not that's not happening at all. So in both cases, orienting is extremely important. Let's pause just for a brief moment. I just want to share with you some of the heartfelt feedback from our incredible Complete Control community members. Listen to this. I, I don't know how I signed up. I think I just got an ad on Instagram and just got a whim, just hit the button and did a call and then signed up and didn't really consciously think much about it. And then after that, I was like, what did I just sign up for? Wait a second here. Like far exceeded my expectations. I'm usually extremely skeptical. So I don't know how I even signed up in the first place, but whatever it was, um, so it's just amazing how like the transformation that I've seen and even the drinking part is just kind of the super, it's, it was the Achilles heel, but it's kind of just the superficial problem. And it's like, once I kind of clear that up, there's so much more possibility and, and, you know, the exploration discussions with Gary, with Candace have just been so powerful and kind of, they both kind of focus on a different area. And then with Glenn kind of looking at my data and, with my co cohorts or classmates or, you know, it's just been just, everything has just been so powerful and kind of supportive of, you know, completing the whole picture of how I do this. Um, so just really grateful and, and uh, yeah. And, and, and also just feel more grateful and not only just for all of you, but just, just in life in general, it's just a little bit more clarity and peace and calm and, and, and so forth. So I am incredibly grateful for this entire program, everybody on this call and everything that we were able to experience. Um, I think that it delivered more than I expected. Honestly, I, I, like I've said before, I've done a couple of like challenges and different things. And I think that this beyond, um, examining my relationship with alcohol and making, I think, pretty good strides in, in, um, staying alcohol free. Um, I think it taught me a ton about myself and how to like examine my habits and my thoughts and those kind of, um, patterns and ways to, ways to approach the things that worried me the most in this, in this experience, um, have just been invaluable. I think I'm leaving feeling um, in stronger in general, more self-aware in general, and um, just really more anchored in who I want to be and what my values are and how I can, you know, take better steps to achieve those. So it's been fantastic for me. And again, the our team, I, I really um, appreciate all the feedback and support from every single person on this call, but my cohort as well. It's been great. So I love everybody that I've met here. I have loved the program. I am not uh, an emotional person like this, but this has changed my life. It, it, it has given me a life. Um, and there's other things I need to do too, um, but I don't have to do them with alcohol anymore. So thank you. It's been an amazing journey and a very, I appreciate the professionalism. Whenever I feel the stress, I, there's there's something that I can go back to, to everybody and the sharing from everybody and the professionalism of the program. So I loved it. And I've grown a lot. So, and kisses.
One word is transformational. That's a word that's been bandied about for decades, but in this, it is absolutely accurate if I was to use one word. This was a great investment. It's not, it's not self-help, it's self-realization. It's um, super powerful, but it, it exceeded my expectations. Or maybe it was Sharon who said that. Um, uh, or maybe I'm exceeding my expectations, and I like that. I mean, the program has been hugely, I'm hugely grateful for the program. I think the journey of, for myself has been amazing. I mean, I remember telling, I don't know if it was Candace or Gary, the first three or four weeks of the program, I was like, I can't stop thinking about not drinking. It's just, it's in my head. I'm ha Every day I'm thinking about not drinking. And it's, it's like now I'm not even thinking about it. You know, it's just like my life has sort of stepped on. I'm excited about the future. Um, things are looking good. Things are looking good. I just love sharing the things people are saying about our complete control program. Okay, let's get back into the episode. So if you could please, wherever you are, get comfortable. Um, you can be sitting. Lying down may not work specifically for this practice. It does for other orienting practices. But for this one, sitting is probably best. And just see if you can comfortably have your feet on the floor. Feel into your feet. You can even push the ground with your feet a little, pushing into the ground. Notice what that may bring you. And feel into your bum. Feel your bum in the seat. And if you can, lean back and just, just feel, you know, try and bring some relaxation into the body. So feel the bum, feel the feet, push the feet into the floor. Look around, notice where you are. Squeeze yourself a little if needed, if needed. And then let's let's begin. So the first axis axis we're gonna look at is the up and down axis. So noticing the weight of your bum on the chest. Really feeling into your weight in the chair. Or your feet on the floor. Your feet have a little bit of weight as well. And then just with curiosity, seeing if you can feel the pull of the earth. There's gravity. Which adds to our weight. See if you can have a sense of that. There is your weight and there's gravity. So really feeling into that. Either at your bum or at your feet. Sometimes you can feel it on your shoulders as well. That's the down axis. Then i feeling at the crown of your head and noticing that if you push up a little, that just straightening your spine, trying to push up with this part of your head, seeing if you can notice that there's a tiny bit of resistance there. Just gravity on the, acting on the air above our head. Just see if you can notice that very subtle bit of weight as we push into the tops of our heads. Into that space above the crown of our head. So there's a sense of pushing up and our weight that is down. See if you can hold in your awareness both the feeling of pushing up and having weight. So there's an, an up, down, a bit of a feeling like this. There's weight pushing up 
and means white pulling down. Let's just spend a moment there. It's an up and a down. Just notice what's going on for you. There's a little bit of lightheadedness, a little bit of disorientation. We're okay. A bit of nausea. Also okay. Trying to hold that feeling up, pushing up and pulling down. Okay. Now we're going to explore another axis. It's going to be the forward back axis. So if you're leaning against something, you can sit up a bit. Or you can just feel into your back where it touches the chair. Feel that. Feel, even push into it a little bit. If you're sitting up, you could push back a little bit and you could push back into the air that's that's against your back. Push back and see if you can get a sense once like again for a bit of resistance. There's air back there. That's also under the force of gravity. You can notice that resistance. Now see if you can do the same for the front. Pushing forward from the middle of your chest, pushing forward into the air that surrounds the front of the body. You can push forward and back. You could notice if there's a little bit of an organic rock that starts happening. Forward and back. Very subtle. It'll be very subtle. If not, just first push the body forward. Feeling the resistance. Push the body back. Feeling the resistance. And see if you can hold in your awareness that sense of forward and back in your body at the same time. If you can't, it's noticing that there is a forward end. And noticing how your body is strong. Next. See if you can add to the noticing of the forward and back. The up and down. See if you can hold them all in your awareness. Up, down, the forward, and the back. Notice what happens in the body when you do this. And again, if you can't hold them all together, that's okay. See if you can do one, then the other, then the other, then the other. So just cycle through them. We're going to spend some time there trying to keep this up, down, forward, back idea, sensation, feeling. In your body. Next, we're going to add the side to side. So pushing towards the neck. So from your shoulder, imagining that it extends out, pushing it to the air around your shoulder or the neck. Imagining that there's a little bit of persistence there. And then to the right. Very subtly. 
like to say that is a way and what. Noticing if the body very gently starts rocking from left to right without us needing to force it. A very subtle left to right lock. That's just organic. And then seeing if you can hold the left and the right orientations together. You could hold them both in your awareness at the same time. Or what happens when you when you do that? Just spend a bit of time there. Noticing the net. And now we're going to add to the awareness of the left and the right, the awareness of the front and the back. See if we can hold both in our awareness, left and right and front and back. If you have some organic rocking happening, it might change as you hold them together. And now see if you can add up and the down. So there's an awareness of an up and a down, a forward and back, and a side to side. Just notice what this brings to your body. Notice what comes up for you, if anything. Just staying with that for a moment. Now we're going to add the last axis inside outside. So noticing the feeling of your clothing on your skin. If that's not accessible to you, see if you can notice your feet and your shoes or on in, this, in your socks or whatever type of shoe you're in. Or if there's a breeze coming through a window or the sun shining on you, seeing if you can notice what it feels like on your skin. There is an outside. You could also notice something in your environment. sound, smell, something you can see, your eyes are open. And noticing this is the outside. It 
just noticing something on the outside. And then noticing something on the inside. It can be a sensation, it can be an emotion, it can be a temperature difference, it can be a tension. So for example, I feel a bit of tension in between my shoulder blades. This is on the inside, the bulk sense from the inside. I also feel a bit of tightness at the base of my throat on the inside. So just going inside and seeing what you can notice. You could notice the sensation of your breath moving in and out. Noticing what this brings you. And now I'll see if you can hold what you've noticed on the inside with what you've noticed on the outside. So if I feel the tension in my throat and hold it with the beautiful tree I see outside my window, so you could hold them together in your awareness at the same time. Or if it's an emotion inside your body, see if you could hold it with the sensation of your clothing and the skin. while really in your awareness at the same time. Feeling what this brings your body. And if you can't hold it together at the same time, just move between the two. Noticing the inside, noticing the outside. Back and forth. Now, with the inside outside, I'd like it to see if you could hold that along with the left to right movement. Seeing if you can hold both in your awareness at the same time. Notice what happens to your body when you do. We're just being here for a moment. Next, see if you can include in your awareness the forward back. You're holding the inside outside, left and right, and now you're including the forward back in your awareness. 
And once again, if you can't hold it all together at the same time, it's okay. Just cycle through them. Or try and hold one pair inside, outside, left to right, or forward, back. And then play with adding an extra one and seeing what happens. And then adding an extra two and seeing what So we've got inside, outside, side to side, front to back. And now let's see if you can add up and down sensation of lifting up and the weight of your weight and gravity coming down. Up and down front to back, side to side, inside, outside. I'm going to be here for a moment to see so you can play a little bit as well. With where you are at the moment, what you can hold, and then when you're comfortable with that, adding something. Adding one of the axes. Noticing what happens in your body. There's some organic shaking or um, rocking going on. That's fine. Just let it happen. Just noticing with curiosity. What you're able to hold. What it feels like to explore. Then up and down. Forward and back. Side to side. Inside, outside. And then very gently letting go of this practice of these uh, the awareness of the acting feeling into your bum. Bring a bit of movement in if you need to. In your feet, pushing down your feet into the ground. And they're just resting. So relaxing back into the chair that you're on. If you feel okay closing your eyes, if, if it's too activating, you can keep them open. And to just rest. Just going to give you a minute of rest. Letting go of what we've just been doing. Letting go of the inquiry, letting go of the curiosity, just rest for a moment. The 
this can sometimes be a lot for the body to process. You're just wasting. When you're ready, you can open your eyes if your eyes are closed. Again, feel into your bum, push your feet into the ground. Use your head and your neck and look around your room a little bit. Notice what you can see. Notice what's there. You can stretch out if you need to as well. Don't hold back. Give your body what it needs right now. Awesome. Thanks for being here. Thanks for, thanks for practicing something that's different. Sometimes new to start working on the body in this way, but we are, we are our bodies as well, not just our minds. We're not just, um, our bodies are not just vehicles for our brains. There's a lot of intelligence that lives in the body. And if we can integrate the mind and the body, we have a lot of, a lot of different access to stuff. We can work with things in a very different way, which is what somatic experiencing is. It's working with things in a different way that's gentler and can really have some sustainable, profound releases, integrations. Anybody has any questions um, down the line or if you would like more resources please just reach out uh, i am on the communities uh, and you can find me